Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about if statements. This is a very basic concept when it comes to game dev and it's essential to understand how it works. Good news is it's pretty simple. So I have a really basic sort of kind of game screen laid out here. I got a background, I have a ground, and I have my character, but problem, when I push things on the keyboard, nothing happens. That's because we don't have any logic in our code here. All we're doing is clearing the screen, drawing a map, and putting our sprite on top of it. One thing I do have set up is a variable for the X position of the sprite and a variable for the Y position of the sprite, which I do have defined here in the init function. But in the update, we want to tell Pico to actually think about things. Generally, the way that you will do that is with an if statement. An if statement tests generally if something is true or false. So you can say if 10 is greater than seven, then PX equals 70. End. And if I run this, our character moves over to the right because 10 is greater than seven. So instead of PX being 30 and making our sprite show up at 30 on the X axis, we're switching PX to be 70 and he's moving over here, right? Obviously this isn't actually that helpful for us because 10 is always greater than seven. And so he's just going to show up at 70 every time, no matter how many times I run this, he shows up at 70. So what we wanna do is test if we hit a button. The way to do that is with this function button like this, and then we can tell it which button in here in the parentheses. So we're gonna use our right arrow, which in Pico, if we hold shift R, that will type a little right arrow emoji and that will totally work for hitting the right button. So if button right, then PX equals 70. So if we save this and run it, he starts at 30, and then if I hit the right button, he moves over to 70. It's sorta like a game. This is great. But we don't want him just to jump over to 70. We actually want him just to kind of move to the right. So what we could do is PX equals PX plus one. And so every time that we update the screen, which is 30 times a second, if we're holding the right button, then what we want it to do is take PX, which starts at 30, and then set it to 30 plus one. And then the next frame that goes over, that's gonna come in as 31. And then we'll set it to 31 plus one, which will be 32 and so on. And so he'll eventually, he'll start to kind of move to the right. So let's see if this works. So now I hold down right button and look at him go. He's walking. All right. So we're using this if statement to test if it's true that we're hitting the right button. Let's go ahead and copy this. I hit control C, come down here a little bit and hit control V, organize my code a little bit. This time, let's actually switch this to the left button. I'll hit shift L to type in that left button. And this time PX equals PX plus one. Let's say actually minus one this time. Let's hit save. And now if we hit the right button, he goes to the right. If we hit the left button, he goes to the left. And now look, we're it's like pretty legit, pretty legit. Just with a couple lines of code, we got a pretty legit little game. All right, so that works pretty well. Another thing that we can do with the if statement is we can make it an else. So an else means if you're basically doing anything except for this, it's going to call that true. So what happens if we get rid of this and we just say else? If we push the right button, then move him to the right, else move him to the left. Let's see what happens here. I'm pressing the right button, he goes to the right. If I let go, he moves to the left. So he's automatically moving to the left if I'm not pressing anything. If I push the right button, he moves to the right. And so there's always one of those things happening. It's either on or off. We can do the same kind of thing if we want him to fly, right? So let's see, let's just switch this to X and let's actually switch this to PY for player Y. So if we hit X, let's see, that's minus one. And if we don't, it's plus one. And check it out now, oops, <laughs> check it out now, he can fly. But if I let go, he falls down, right? So it's fly or fall. And you can see what we might be kind of getting at here. Some kind of, it's like he's some kind of bird. And if he flaps his wings, he can, you know, go over these pipes, but I don't know. Somebody should make a game like that someday. Anyways, yeah. So this if statement, this is very, very powerful. We can test if things are true. And the else is basically in every other circumstance. We can also do an else if else if that's only going to run code if this statement isn't true and this statement is true okay so if button maybe our o button which i'm just hitting shift o then let's just have it stay in place so now if i hit x 
he goes up. If I let go of X, he goes down. And if I hold the O button, which is Z on a PC keyboard, he stays there. So he's either doing X, O, or neither of them. This kind of thing, very, very powerful. If we're doing something, then if something is true, you can do this. If it's not true and this is true, then you can do another thing. And you can have like a bunch of else ifs. You can test for all kinds of different states here. I can have 15 different else ifs here, testing for every single button in the world and have him do different things for each button. And then if I'm not hitting any of those things, like worst case scenario, do this code. So else and else if, those are optional, but they can really help kind of build some logic into your games. So again, open up Pico, play with this, make an if statement. Just a reminder, you always need if, whatever you're testing for, and then the word then, and then your code. And then at the end of if, basically everything in Pico, you need an end, okay? Hope this is helpful for any of you game dev noobs. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you watched this far, go ahead and hit that like button. And yeah, thanks for watching.